so what do these bacteria do okay it is called as extended phenotype now this is very interesting now, extended phenotype is what uh, extended phenotype is something that helps pathogen to spread from one plant to other plant now phytoplasma cannot move themselves okay they need help from somebody so they take help of insects like the on which insects are these of course the insect which feeds on sap okay now how do how do this happen how do insect choose these plants and that is where comes in extended phenotype now when pathogen infects plants these phytoplasma they hijack the basic plant physiology uh, by attacking their basic development now what happens hey hi welcome to biotech talks phytoplasma that is what the topic of today's episode of biotech talk is now phytoplasmas are recently discovered group of organisms they are bacteria and they infect plants so these phytoplasmas are uh, harmful for our agriculturally important crops and the thing is that we don't have any solutions against this infections like we don't have antibiotics against the infection caused by phytoplasmas now why is that it is simply because we are not able to cultivate phytoplasmas okay they are classified as not yet cultivable organisms and that is the reason why we don't have solutions to it so what are phytoplasmas uh, how do they infect plants what potential solutions are we expecting to deal with phytoplasma infection that is what we are going to get to know today in this podcast by dr amit yadav working on phytoplasmas scientist c at ncmr and ccs so i hope you enjoy the podcast hello sir how are you i'm good so sir uh, starting with the first question of the podcast what are phytoplasmas uh phytoplasmas are uh, uh bacteria of course they were initially thought to be viruses based on the symptoms which used to be appear on the plants uh, they were resembling to the uh, symptoms which are caused by viruses later on it was discovered that they're not viruses in fact they are bacteria um the discovery was not very very old uh, of course the first site site uh, sighting of phytoplasma was done in 1967 but if you ask me when cyphite plasmas were formally described they were in only in 2004 okay. uh so that way they are quite recent organisms uh in 1990s there were a lot of research which was going on which which people did on uh, detecting phytoplasmas uh, in fact that was the time where pcr was uh, started uh, you, we started using them routinely people then uh started detecting phytoplasmas quite routinely uh, in plants so they are uh, bacteria they are they reside in plants they cause path, they are pathogenic they cause lot of diseases among the plants they are transferred from one plant to other plant by insect vectors uh yeah economically quite important bacteria so um, yes that's the reason why we are working on it okay so now i was reading about uh, phytoplasmas and i came to know that it is very difficult to cultivate them right. so why is that uh cultivation is uh, uh, based on uh, what we do in in lab is based on media right so uh, if you say bacillus pseudomonas or any other aerobic bacteria which grows on uh, um, uh, media plate it mainly de- depended upon how the bacteria utilizes that particular media okay now the what happens with phytoplasmas because of the way they evolved along with their host plants okay they tend to uh, evolve in a way that they now cannot survive without their host so phytoplasmas resides in the phloem tissue of the plants where you know that probably uh, the phloem carries the sap the main plant nutrients okay so they uh, they accommodated or they adjusted themselves or evolved uh, with with the plants and they started staying in that one they also stay in insect salivary glands Uh, if you see both sap and salivary gland contains by the way sap is one of the most complex chemical composition that one can have uh, also uh, the salivary gland uh, composition probably yes secondly that's why it is very difficult to mimic that particular thing in vitro that is in laboratory secondly phytoplasmas do not have cell wall okay so you really cannot handle them the way you handle uh, 
uh, bacilli or any other aerobic uh, bacteria they don't form colonies uh, the way bacilli or any other anaerobic uh, bacteria they form colonies so because you try to isolate them probably probably just by osmotic pressure or just by handling physical pressures they are not able to survive other than the plant host or insect host that's the reason why probably they are not able to cultivate they are not able to cultivate how do we actually cultivate them uh, there are attempts of course that it doesn't mean that people never attempted that we uh, there were a lot of attempts which are made uh, to uh, to grow them in 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 a media or in a chamber where the osmotic pressure is maintained uh by using liquid media or by using uh, all probable media where they can mimic the sap contains or something like that but so far uh, there is there is no um, success to that um how do you grow them i think it is lot of permutation combination that you have to make uh, maybe but of course it is we term them as not yet cultivable doesn't mean that they are not cultivable probably in another few years maybe we will be able to success get the success in cultivating them so you mentioned uh, about insects right uh, so they are involved in the life cycle of phytoplankton correct so how is that working see um insects um for any pathogen survival is the is the strategy if you see all around uh, life life on the earth is all about surviving it's all about reproducing and it's about all about food okay these are the things which life revolves around so everybody if any life forms which trying to we uh, will which will always trying to reproduce which will always trying to spread which will always trying to survive for longer time so what do these bacteria do okay it is called as extended phenotype now this is very interesting now, extended phenotype is what uh, extended phenotype is something that helps pathogen to spread from one plant to other plant now phytoplasma cannot move themselves okay they need help from somebody so they take help of insects okay the on which insects are these of course the insect which feeds on sap okay now how do how do this happen how do insect choose these plants and that is where comes in extended phenotype now when pathogen infects plants these phytoplasma they hijack the basic plant physiology uh, by attacking their basic development now what happens if you if i if i could show you the pictures but the basic phenotype which phytoplasma generates is blooming you get lot of branches then you get discoloration the the leaves becomes orange yellow uh, or shades of green or bright green if you see flowers they become they go back to their vegetative uh, mode so flowers become green they become leafy again so and there are n number of other things stems they get flattened um, you you have uh, that is called fasciation then you have the flower turning into uh, uh, leaf he structures called as phyloidy then you have a uh, virescence again the virescence means um, the symptoms which looks like a virus infections so all these phenotypes once it is infected phytoplasma infected plant all these phenotypes they attract insects because they look different they look they if you see the field of sesame and uh, those phytoplasma infected plant if you see they lo- they look lush green a bright green so why why so because they stand out from other plants which are not infected and that's how that standing out attracts insects discoloration attract insects fasciation attract insects so why attracting insects they come and feed on that particular plant and then of course the insect will because they are leaf hoppers they are hopping from one plant to other plant they of course go and feed on other plants and the phytoplasma spreads and that is how the survival strategy works for phytoplasma so is there any uh, harm of uh, this phytoplasma for agriculture important crops right it 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 does this extended phenotype business for many different plant but it causes devastating effect as far as the economic plants are concerned now what happens when i told you that leafy stuck the flowers they turn into leafy structures now you know the importance of flowers what happens in in plant development flowers are the pre stage for the fruit development if you don't have a flowers on a plant you won't have a fruits right so same thing happens in coconut now coconut if you see is a major issue in south southern part of india african countries and most of the tropical countries where coconut is growing as a economically important plant 
they don't have coconuts that's how it is okay if you if you now the another important part is sandalwood now sandalwood doesn't really falls into category of flower and fruit part but the it is the, the another symptoms which cause a phytoplasma in sandalwood is spiking if you see a normal branch it will it will grow a normal tree but if you see the spike disease it's called a sandalwood spike disease the branch will grow so long and with tiny leaves and with sort of a bright green yellowish uh, leaves it stands out in the in the forest okay but that what happens because of that the plant growth stops okay and you know the heartwood of a sandalwood it it only only exists in a mature trees so if infection happens in that before uh, the uh, the heartwood start developing you don't have a heartwood sugarcane sugarcane again there is no fruit business here you are actually harvesting the the mass of sugarcane right but what happens when phytoplasma infect sugarcane okay the stop the it, its growth stops okay now what happens it's it's called as stunting so if you see i'll show you the photographs maybe a little later on and how does this happens sugarcane will grow uh, say 6 7 or 8 feet long right if it is a healthy growth but once phytoplasma infects it remain only 2 or 3 feet with numerous tillers coming out from the uh, from the sugarcane plant so you don't have a cane development at all so you don't have a cane development you don't have anything to harvest so that's how it is sesame sesame is a typical uh, example of flowering this thing so it's called as phyloidy so if infection happens before flower development it it completely turns into um, a bunch of leafy structure and you don't have flowers you don't have uh, pods you don't have seeds same thing happens with soybean in fact the soybean disease name is very interesting it's called as soybean no pod disease okay so what happens here is again the same thing it's the soybean plant is 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 grow it's growing now it's a flowering stage you don't have flowers the plant look very healthy but you don't have flowers you don't have pods and that's because of phytoplasma so like how do people deal with this phytoplasma infection people don't know about phytoplasma diseases people uh, in my last 6 7 years of experience of phytoplasma diseases forget about farmers even researchers don't know about uh, phytoplasma so it is now only last 3 4 years probably because of the conferences lot of brainstorming there are many important plants which are suscept- getting susceptible to phytoplasma phytoplasma spread is getting uh, noticed there is some awareness among the researchers who are working on agriculture field but overall if you if you ask me uh, there is no awareness about phytoplasma diseases Uh, at farmer level uh, no people don't know about it um, so how do we deal about it right now there is no cure to this uh, it is a systemic infection because it is in sap right we cannot apply any antibiotics we cannot apply uh, any uh, chemical as of now because we don't know which chemical to use to to, to bring with uh, so so we don't know really so what what potential solutions do you think will come out for this um it's it's a difficult question it's a difficult question that what is a potential solution for that uh, we are brainstorming uh, about that particular solution that how we go about it but uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out plants which are resistant to phytoplasma that when you challenge a plant with phytoplasma infection through grafting or through insect vectors or something like that the phytoplasma uh, resistant plant should should develop so that is one part but that is a quite a lengthy uh and time taking process secondly we are trying to find out if there is any biocontrol agent by comparing uh, the endophytic uh, bacterial or fungal uh, agents where we can see that presence of those or absence of those actually stops the phytoplasma infection but that is again a lot of surveying is need to be done on on that particular part uh and third where people are actually working on is to develop a transgenic plants uh where uh, where you you develop a plants which are resistant to phytoplasma again you know the reason why there are i mean there there are other aspects of trans- developing transgenic plants which is a more of a po- socio political reasons so we don't know what what will be the fate of that now before we go for uh, understanding of or rather for trying to find out the solution what could be the solution of this it is very important to know how phytoplasma pathogenicity works 
and right now the if you see the papers which are coming out in last couple of years are focused mainly on those that we are trying to find out in fact one of i mean one of my student phd students is working over here is also trying to find out how pathogenicity of phytoplasma works so how does it that happen so this will help in developing transgenic plants because transgenic plants will have those genes which will which will try to target these uh, proteins right yeah. so pathogenesis is related to normally effect of proteins where these proteins normally are released by pathogens they go to the plant uh, host and then uh, they alter the plant development right so we are trying to understand which of these effect of proteins from phytoplasma are actually effective in uh, are actually affecting the plant development so once we have these target molecules uh, mapped or, or uh, characterized then it will be probably easy tomorrow to target these or to find out a solution based on the knowledge which has gained from these studies to develop the plants that is what the strategy right now is okay so you were research is focusing on to uh, find this target yes molecules in the phytoplasma right with the help of which maybe the phytoplasma pesticide something like that can be made mm, yeah phytoplasma is not a pest not a pesticide uh, yeah some, uh, some antibacterial some. antibacterial solution or something like that or a plant altogether that we need to develop the line of uh, line of plants which are resistant to phytoplasma yeah. so that's all sir i had questions thank you very much for your time yeah thanks